Now, Labour has won the Batley and Spen by-election following a closely fought uh, fight with a narrow majority of 323. After a tough campaign, Kim Leadbeater won the seat once held by sister Jo Cox, who was brutally murdered outside a constituency office. You remember back in 2016. Now, the person responsible for Labour's election campaign, Shabana Mahmood, joins us now from Westminster. Shabana, how do you feel this morning? I mean, at one point you were... I know there was concern that you may lose this by-election. In the end, the majority is only 323. You as a party just cannot take anything for granted right now, can you? Well, we don't take anything for granted, but this is a fantastic uh, result for for the Labour Party and uh, a very, very richly deserved win for uh, Kim Leadbeater, who's been a superb candidate, and I'm delighted for her that she's going to be representing her home turf in Parliament. Uh, and and it's, it's a very, very strong performance, given the local context of the by-election, which, as you say, was very, very tough, and we had a lot of fear and division being sown between, uh, between the communities uh, for whom Batley and Spen is their home, with the far left and the far right uh, active in the seat. So we are delighted to uh, have held the seat and I am very, very proud of Kim Leadbeater, who's going to make a fantastic Member of Parliament. But so it was so close because of George Galloway cutting through, was it? Is that, was that the problem? Well, it's clear that George Galloway was spreading a politics of uh, fear and division. And, you know, the politics of fear can be very powerful. It can, it, we saw that happening in Batley and Spen, where communities we, were being uh, turned against one another because they were being told to be afraid of one another. And, uh, and, and that was uh, something that, that was the challenge that we were facing. And as Kim said in her victory speech, in the end, the people of Batley and Spen chose hope over division. And I'm very, very pleased that they did. And that's because Kim herself, uh, it was clear every time she met somebody was able to demonstrate that she would be a Member of Parliament for every community for whom Batley and Spen is their home and that she's going to advocate for them on the issues that matter to them here in Parliament. Mm. But it's still 8,000 votes, over 8,000 votes for George Galloway, which is a, a huge number in the context of the amount of people that voted for the, your party. I mean, it's, it, you know, you can't just ignore that. And one of the things that was discussed over the last coming weeks was the British Muslim community. Now, you're from that community and their concern that the Labour leadership just wasn't representing them, wasn't talking about issues that mattered to them, namely Palestine and perhaps even Kashmir. What's your take on that and what can you... What do you say to that 8,000 people now who voted against your party, supposedly, on those issues? Well, look, we, I was with Kim in this by-election, uh, spent, spent time there every, every week of the campaign, and I was talking with her to voters in Batley and Spent about all of those issues that matter to them, for that whole broad panoply of issues, whether it was crime and antisocial behaviour or whether it was foreign policy issues such as Palestine and Kashmir as well. We were facing a campaign where so much propaganda had been spread about the Labour position, going viral on WhatsApp groups, across social media platforms, and, you know, we needed to challenge that, and we we did, and uh, that's that. That is down to the campaign that Kim was leading as the candidate, uh, and she was unafraid to speak about those issues to the voters of Batley and Spen, and 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 state her case and and give them clarity as to what she would be doing about all of the issues that matter to them as their member of parliament. So, what, what, and, so now she's now she's been voted in for those British Muslims there. What will she be doing about the situation in Palestine and Kashmir that concerns them? Well, she, she, she made it very clear that she would advocate very strongly uh, on both the issue of Palestine as well as human rights abuses in Kashmir and a whole range of the other issues that people were talking to her about as well. And, and I just want to say that having been there on the ground myself, the British Muslim community in Batley and Spen cared a lot about some of those issues, but they also wanted to talk to her about crime and antisocial behaviour, uh, you know, dangerous driving, speed boy races came up quite a lot when I was there on the doorstep, people's fears about the sorts of jobs their kids were going to have, and those are the issues that transcend and affect every single community uh, in Batley and Spen. And I think what Kim was able to show is that as their Member of Parliament, she will be just as comfortable advocating for domestic bread and butter issues that matter to everybody and also specific issues that matter to uh, communities who have often family in parts of the world that they're concerned about their futures too. So I think that we're we, have a, we had a candidate and we now have a Member of Parliament, a Labour Member of Parliament, who's going to be a strong advocate and a positive representative for the people of Batley and Spen. Did um, Labour win this, and it is a win, albeit maybe some would argue by the skin of their teeth, did Labour win this or did Matt Hancock lose it for the Conservatives? 
Well, this is a Labour win uh, in Batley and Spen, and I'm very clear that this is a, a win for Kim Leadbeater and the local campaign team who ran a positive campaign focused on the issues that matter to the people of Batley and Spen. Anybody okay. who spent time in that by-election campaign will have seen that positivity shine through, and in the and end, you, that you, is what you, the people of Batley and Spen You clearly stated chose. that. Sorry to interrupt you, but you didn't really answer the question. And also, you, you went back yes, to the campaign. You asked me if we won, and I said we this. did. Let, well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, then. You're talking very passionately about the effectiveness that Kim Lebbita had when she was there in the community. People talk very passionately about how Keir Starmer, when he meets people, cuts through. And yet, it doesn't appear from the outside to those who haven't directly met them as though that message is getting across in the wider field. You talked about negative campaigning on social media. That's the nature of politics now, isn't it? So what can Labour do? Because already uh, people are saying that Keir Starmer had a near miss here. People were circling to remove him as leader if this hadn't gone by that 323 votes to Labour. So how broadly speaking, not just in the campaign there, but for Labour generally, can they cut through better? Look, I've got no truck with anybody engaging in any kind of speculation whatsoever. And we are very clear. Keir himself is very clear about the scale of the challenge that we face. That 2019 general election result was a truly terrible result for us. And in order to uh, win the next general election, we have to pull off something that we didn't even quite achieve in 1997. We need a bigger swing than what we achieved in 1997. Keir has always said we have a mountain to climb. And what we've seen in the local elections and, and since then is that whilst we are making progress in some parts of the country, we still have work to do in other parts of the country as well. That is the nature of an opposition party coming from a disastrous result such as that which we had in 2019. We are making progress. I'm clear that we've got to learn lessons from the areas in which we have made progress and also learn the lessons of defeat in places like Hartlepool, where obviously we had a, a big setback as well. So um, there is a big job of work for us to do and we, we are getting on with that job. Uh, but this, this result shows that a positive campaign with a local candidate speaking about the issues that matter to people can cut through even when facing a highly divisive, dangerous and fear-mongering campaign such as what we saw in this by-election campaign. OK. Uh, Shabana Mahmood, thanks for joining us. National Campaign Coordinator for the Labour Party.